Today, whatever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may go, you are a part of atomic warfare. It involves you, personally, in laboratories and in the field, in little-known places and ways. Units of the defense establishment of the United States are learning to work with atomic weapons, learning to strike, learning defense against the effects of atomic weapons. Blast, heat, light, radiation. Military units work continuously with the laboratories of the Atomic Energy Commission and their new weapon ideas. The services devise handling equipment and techniques that are practical and delivery methods that are deadly under any and all conditions of weather and warfare. Thirteen minutes from now, this airplane is going to drop an atomic bomb on your country. You will see it happen. Fall 1950. A fierce international war rips through a small country on the North Yellow Sea called Korea. Russia has successfully detonated an atomic bomb. Now the Alamogordo of the Ural Valley is a fact. Now more than ever before, the balance of international power rests with atomic energy. With weapons moving steadily from assembly line to stockpile moving to hidden subterranean vaults to be stored, ready and waiting. But stockpiling alone in this day and year is not enough. We need to develop and produce a greater number and variety and possibly even more powerful atomic weapons. Weapons tailored for specialized uses and targets. The biography of every atomic cloud is essentially the same. The intense heat and violence of the fireball as it sears the sky causes the spectacular and colorful rust-like condition in the air around it. As the fireball cools, an enormous vacuum and afterwind is created, causing the desert floor to rise up into the cloud itself to form the characteristic mushroom stem. The cooling also sets up a rapid condensation in the air around the fireball that sometimes produces layers of ice crystals, literally an ice cap. Knowledge gained on previous nuclear weapons tests has produced the theory that once the cloud has formed and stabilized in the sky, the vitally significant fission products in so-called unburned fission fragments don't distribute themselves evenly, but tend to collect in very large, invisible pockets, hot pockets, or cells inside the cloud. The particles that are suspended in these nebulous cells indicate many things that happen inside the bomb, as well as the efficiency of the fission reaction. So attempting to locate the cells and collect samples from them is a mission of the highest priority. We re-enter our display areas close to ground zero, once Rad safe okays us for the move up. Since the biggest value of the operation is for us to prove to ourselves that it can be done and find any weak points in the training, psychiatrists are with us to study our reactions before, during, and after the experience. It's quite an experience, no matter where you are to watch it. This kind of experience is immensely valuable for any military man.